to me, the big uh, storyline, the number one storyline for me uh, was clearly Oklahoma State uh, beating the shit out of West Virginia. And they kind of did beat the shit out of them it, it, physically and, and mentally and without Kate Cunningham and Isaac Likely, which was yeah. crazy. Yeah, it really is. It was an unbelievable performance. And, you know, I want to make sure that Mike Boynton gets, you know, there, there's reasons to be critical of West Virginia. Uh, in that performance, there was there was some effort things that they did not do very well. Um, they allowed way too many offensive rebounds. They were way too lackadaisical in transition. I am sure that Huggy Bear is going to run that out of them uh, in practice this week. Um, if he hasn't done it by now. I, I don't understand how they haven't gotten better defensively by now. And Deshaun Butler was saying this last night in the locker room with us. Like he's, I, I give Day a lot of credit. Now again, you can do this with Huggins, right? When when your coach is Huggins, you can be a little bit more honest than some former players can be about their coaches. But Deshaun said the same thing. He's like, I'm shocked that they haven't gotten better and taken more pride in their defense. Well, yeah, it's also Deshaun Butler, too, who went from being kind of like an overlooked recruit yeah. uh, and a guy that played that was recruited to go to play zone and shoot threes for John Beeline that turned into an All-American for Bob Huggins and took West Virginia to the Final Four. Yeah, like, true, that true. dude – that that dude, like in the state of West Virginia, has I don't want to say he has as much sway as Bob Huggins, but like he's he's kind of climbing up there on the list, right? Like he's like it's he's like Jerry, are, are you trying to tell me it's it's Jerry West, Bob Huggins, and Deshaun Butler? <laughs> yes, pretty much. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, who said uh, to eighty two Atlantic who said your new name is Good Man Bad Internet. <laughs> yeah, huh. Hey, that's, that's funny. That's funny. I didn't pay my bill. Um, I didn't pay no, my bill. So, so here's here's my take on on Oklahoma State, and I, I'm curious what you think about this. So the people that are like more analytical, uh, analytically savvy than I am, will tell you that um, Oklahoma State has been one of the luckier teams in college basketball this season, and it makes sense because they've really run good in a lot of close games. Like there was the the foul call against Texas Tech, and Kate Cunningham had a couple game winners, and. Um, if you're banking on having one guy hit a shot to win a game at the end of the game, that's normally not the best way to do it because, like, what? The best players have a 60% chance of hitting a game winner, you know? So um, what the the analytically savvy people will tell you is that they've, they've, had, they've been running really good, they've been running really hot, and that's, you know, a, a dangerous way to play. But what I would say is that they've actually lost, like, four of their seven losses have been by one possession. They've won all four of their overtime games that they've been in. Um, but it's not like they've won every single close game that they've been in because every single game that they play is close. And yeah. um, I think I, I think there's a couple things that have really benefited them. One, like obviously Cade Cunningham not shying away from the moment, being able to handle that kind of pressure, and the fact that he's just so damn good uh, has really, really been big for them. But the other part of it is they've played a lot without – ice likely and they've played a lot without Cade Cunningham and it's yep. forced some of these guys like Avery Anderson had 31 yesterday and I know West Virginia awesome. defense is not great but he got wherever he wanted hit whatever shot he wanted and made so yep. many plays um I, I don't know which boon is which so I'm not going to try to 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 keep them straight but one of the boons hit three threes the other Kaelin, one had a couple of really Kaelin, big Kaelin Boone hit the threes Caleb Boone is kind of the more inside uh of the boons he's the one who who, who rebounds the hell out of it yeah, so they uh, both of them played really well yesterday. Um, the uh, the Mon Matthew Alexander Moncrief had a really good game. He's so, good. Yes, yeah. he's going to be really good. So it's kind of the same thing as Illinois in the sense that yes, there are some warts on this team, but at the end of the day, they have a young roster that has only gotten better. They have one of the best closers in college basketball. And they have a coach that has just figured out a way to get his guys to play balls to the wall for 40 minutes every single night. And yeah. I give a lot of credit to Mike Boynton for that. Like he's been able to be very adaptable when it comes to kind of the stuff that they run. Like yesterday's matchup zone, just it made West Virginia look like they were a, 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 like a JV team at times offensively. Like they, were, they were so lost against like how many times did Miles McBride just try to throw an entry pass that got stolen? There were yeah. at least three of them. And they took away McBride. They took Sean McNeil out of any rhythm. And finding a way to do that against so many different teams that play different styles, like he's, he's been really, really good against what I think that, you know, even in a moment of honesty that, that he might say is kind of an undermanned team in terms of uh, talent and experience wise. So he's been awesome. 
Cade's been awesome. Oklahoma State's been awesome. And if you can't like get into this Oklahoma State story and like buy into it, it, I've been into it all year, uh, Rob. I've I've been higher on this team than than just about anybody from the outset. Uh, having a preseason top twenty five, having them higher than everybody in in, in the rankings. Um, you know, to me again, Cade's special. He's special in every way. Like the first time I remember seeing him in AAU ball, I felt that way. Um, was just kind of he has all those intangibles. Everybody follows him, and and again. As Mike Boynton kind of – we're on a text thread with him last night. Uh, he first of all made fun of us for this. Um, <laughs> he, roast, he roasted yeah. us, man. <laughs> yeah. He roasted us first because we picked against him, and somebody obviously told him. He said he watched. I I, I hope he didn't watch, but maybe he did. Uh, maybe maybe Mike Boynton is actually big slick or something on here. We don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe. But, but ultimately, uh, the one thing you know he said was – uh, Kate Cunningham is just instead of some guys when they're when they're told they're passing too much, uh, they they take it personally and try to shoot more and try to look for their own. He he looks at it as a badge of honor that people tell him that he is too unselfish. And I, again, I think that's what makes him special is he's not all about him. He has so much like confidence in himself that he doesn't need to prove to people. Um, what he can't do, doesn't mm-hmm. care, just doesn't give a shit, just wants to win ball games. And I, I love you, you, you texted it in the text thread. Um, how K was on the sideline. That's real. Not like that's like, that's real. That's not an act. Like some guys are sitting on the sideline and saying, Oh man, my team is beating West Virginia without me in Morgantown. People are gonna think I'm overrated. He just wants to win. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's fun to watch, and it's very clear that he's entirely bought in on this season look he, he's there for one year everybody knows it no one's going to say otherwise but he's entirely bought in for that one season and again like we made this point before it goes to show you like the the importance of having relationships in this sport like if, if kate cunningham wanted to he could have gone anywhere else in the country when the ruling came down that said that oklahoma state wasn't going to be able to yep. play in the ncaa tournament he stayed he stayed there because of the relationships that he's built um his brother was hired by mike boyton yes but his brother could have been hired by any coach in the country. They picked Oklahoma State for a reason. So I will make that point over and over and over again. Uh, and so his shout out to my boy. could have gotten Texas or Texas Tech at that point when in, when the NCAA hit Oklahoma State with their with their yep. one year postseason ban. They could have still went a, as a tandem to a variety of schools and a variety of other coaches would have created a spot at that point. They would have yeah. demoted a guy from uh, assistant coach to ops just to be able to bring in Cannon Cunningham and his brother, Kay. 